Hello and welcome back to Station Ears. I'm Mick and today we're going to be having a look at our new uh, thermodynamics update. Uh, well, that's what they're calling it anyway. But with this one we have had, we've got a couple of new, well, adjusted, not so much new. Uh, we've got, well, some new. We've got new, new radiators and our old ones still there. So we've got them for the water. We've got little ones for the gas. We have our medium radiators big ones here once again we now have a new one of them as well so just using a scroll scroll wheel we have a radiator and a convection radiator same with the small ones there with the scroll scroll wheel uh, convection radiators and uh, regular radiators uh, so we've got them for gas and for water uh, same with uh, the medium ones and we still have our we still have our large uh, one of them now these ones are around the corner a bit of a change as well uh, so where did my doodad go to finish it off and we still have those ones there uh, now did we ever get a guess one of them I don't remember I remember getting one but uh, it might have been my imagination but we don't have one now so probably not um, I wanted one, I think that's what it was, and I never got one. <laughs> but anyway, let's have a look at what we've got. Now, there is a noticeable difference in our uh, gas uh, analyzer as well. Because when we point it at things, we have a little bit of extra information here, which is our radiated and convected heat there. Uh, so now we're outside today, it is 20 degrees in there, it is 19 outside. Uh, so we see one's positive, one's negative. It is getting a negative radiation, which means it's gathering heat because it's in the sun or the black hole. Uh, it is gathering heat. It is actually convecting heat out of the pipe and gathering more heat from the sun there. Uh, now we have a, a couple of different ones here. We have our convection radiator, which is optimized for convection. So if we look at the two, we're getting 25 joules in that one. We're getting 66 in this one here. So that one is better at convecting heat. Of course, the convection is passing the heat to the surrounding atmosphere. Uh, if there's no surrounding atmosphere, it shouldn't be able to convect. So we might run up to the moon and see if that actually works. Uh, but also our radiator. This one is uh, gaining 11.3. That one is gaining 111.6 joules. Uh, so it is actually going up in temperature. Uh, so now we see that our pipe radiators, these ones here, do not respond to being in the sun. They are just convecting because they're in atmosphere. When they're on the moon, they should just radiate. Of course, one is better than the other. The convection radiator is, surprise, surprise, the better one at convection. The uh, other radiator is not... Uh, now, uh, one thing I have noticed with this thing here, a little, little bug to be wary of on this one. Um, now, if you put these ones on the ground like that, uh, they... Where's my thing I go on? There it is. These ones are working just fine. Um, if we do the same with the gas one, up against the frame, uh, it doesn't do anything. That one's working fine, that one does nothing. Uh, not sure why the water one works and the other one doesn't. That might just be a bit of a bug at the moment, it's just something to be careful of. So uh, if they're not working when they're like that, it's because the, uh, the gas ones don't like that. Uh, but the other ones seem to be fine. Uh, but yeah, we put our, <laughs> put our, <laughs> our radiators on and they're yellow. Oh, wow. It kind of really makes you appreciate the orange, doesn't it? Okay, but yeah, they're, um, they're very yellow. Fortunately, the big ones have come out as orange. Good old orange. Yep, you can't go wrong with orange. Um, but there you have it. So they're the new radiators we got. Uh, they are well, just basically bigger ones. They fixed the, the glitchy positioning that these ones had. So you can... Uh, set them on the side of frames now uh, you can uh, can I lay them down properly I can't can't lay them down anymore Ooh, they're only vertical now that's a little annoying but anyway 
is what it is. Right, so those ones there. Now these ones, these ones have got a huge kick in the guts. These ones produce a heap of heat. Uh, so just from sitting in the sun, um, I've run out of pipes. Uh, some pipes. Um, I shall uh, hook. Hook ye up. Um, I shall need a tank of water and a tank connector, of course. There it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You stay there. Right, pop you down. We've got some water in there now. Um, yeah. All right, there's a lot of water in there, and we can see it is starting to rise in temperature pretty quickly. Now, that is pretty cool. So, if you want to keep get your, your water actually heated up on Europa or something like that, something like this will heat it up very quickly in a massive way. So, um, yeah. That'll be cool for you drink, and it's completely free. Of course, it won't do it at night time, but it'll, it'll, it'll do it during the day. Uh, so that's something you can have to get that going. Right, so now these ones, these ones are pretty cool. As I say, some are designed for atmosphere, some are say, designed for not atmosphere. So uh, let's go to the moon and have a bit of a look and see how they work in a vacuum. Right, here we are on the moon. Now, uh, we have them set up. We can see that they are now convecting absolutely nothing. Uh, they are radiating. Once again, positive number means they're radiating the heat out. Uh, the temperature in the pipe is uh, 76 degrees, and we are radiating out the, uh, well, the radiator. radiator is putting out 13 kilojoules. Our convection radiator still radiates, but it's only putting out 1.5 kilojoules. So not as good there. Once again, pipe radiators, once again, they are convecting heat. Now, these ones are in the sun and they are still radiating. So they, they don't have to worry about where you put them there because they'll still work. Uh, whereas this one over here, as we say, that has a negative radiation. That one is still absorbing the sun. So um, these ones don't quite work the same way as that one. Uh, but... Uh, there you go, they still work even when in direct sunlight. So they are the way to go for cooling your base. Once again, you want the radiator, not the convection radiator when you're on the moon. It will do a huge amount for you. Once again, small ones as well, not a problem. Uh, right, so there we go, that's that. Right, so once again, back on here. So once again, we can see these ones in the sun do actually heat up. Uh, so the radiator is actually absorbing more heat than it's emitting, so it is actually going up in temperature. Uh, and we can sort of say, say, if you just look at look at the pipe, it can tell you what the pipe is doing. So this one here will tell you that the pipe. Now that's not including the heaters; it's just telling the pipe itself. So the pipe is convecting some heat. Um, the insulated ones are, of course, doing nothing. Uh, so that lets you know that there is some part of that pipe is not insulated. So if you've got a heat leak, just uh, look at the pipe now and it'll tell you what, whether or not the pipe's a problem. Uh, but anyway, that's that. Another thing that has changed is that, uh, once again, our insulated pipes, you used to be able to get perfect insulation when they were sitting inside a frame. Well, uh, not anymore. Uh, so we shall... Uh, I guess I can take them out and... Uh, pop it into a frame. May as well do it over here. Put three of them in there. Now we can see that it is radiating 757 joules. Now it used to be, um, if I put in a, a frame there and sealed it up, that would be perfectly insulated. You can see now it is not. Uh, so that is still radiating. Uh, if I take out those frames, um, if I take you out of there, once again, perfectly insulated. Connect up that one, it is now not insulated. Right, so that pipe 
will still lose heat to the atmosphere. The same with your furnace. If your furnace is sealed in there, it will not be insulated. The same happens with a vacuum. If you put a, any pipe in a vacuum or a furnace in a vacuum, it used to be insulated. It is not anymore. So uh, the old insulation, uh, perfectly insulated furnace trick now no longer works. Good thing nobody used that, huh? Um, right. Uh, but this is uh, one way, apparently. So it will lose heat but it will not gain heat. So if you've got cold pipes going through there, they don't get hotter. Right, so now we have a cold pipe. 0.7 degrees in there. It is 11 degrees out here. Uh, a hot pipe. Now the hot pipe does show that it is radiating, even though it's sealed inside the frame. The cold pipe is not radiating anything. So your cold pipes will stay cold the loss of heat in your furnace is one way. So it will lose heat, it will not lose cold. Absorb heat, I think that's called. Uh, so once again, if I pull off the frame, just to prove that it is going. So now this one is gaining heat. Uh, and that one is still losing heat. Uh, well, actually, that one is at uh, 755 joules it's losing. Uh, uh, well, okay, so it, it does actually help a lot, but it's not perfectly insulated. Um, so if uh, furnaces that you've got sealed in there will work, still work to a large degree. Uh, so it's not that bad, but um, they will lose heat. They'll no longer be perfectly insulated. Whereas your hard one cooling system that you may have built on Venus, that one is protected. So you won't lose all your heat or all your cold to the atmosphere, so you can still seal them up and you should be fine. But your furnaces, your furnaces have changed. So, but um, there is something we can do. I mean, this thing here interests me. This one gains a lot of heat. Uh, so if we look at that one there, it is popping up 200 degrees. There's a lot of water in there. So I think, and can we actually use this thing? Because I mean, now, it's difficult to electrically heat your furnace. So going on to uh, places like Venus, you can't actually, well, the air conditioners don't work so well anymore, but these things will get you a bit of heat. So if these ones can go 300 degrees above your ambient temperature, hook on one of these up to your furnace, should be a way to get uh, things like steel, because your daytime temperature is 400, or you need an extra couple of, few degrees, and that one will do it for you. So if we hook a heater, our furnace with that one, we should be able to get easy steel on Venus. Uh, the only trick is you need steel to make this. So that's a bit of a bummer, but um, we'll see how we go. So I'd like to be able to hook this up to the furnace. Now I do wonder, so I mean, this one says it can get 300 degrees above the convective temperature. So if we put that in a room that is heated by itself, now, as that room heats up, will, be, will, will it be able to heat to 300 degrees above the room temperature? Or is it just going to be a 300 degrees uh, absolute maximum? So I want to put that one there. Uh, we are on, oh, sun's going down, too late. We are on uh, Lulan here. The sun goes pretty much directly overhead. So if I stick that on a wall, uh, hook up radiators, or hook up a logic system to get to get that going and then I put up, I'll, I don't have a gas one of these, so I'll probably have to put up a heat exchanger to get that to gas, and put up a furnace and uh, we should be good. Um, right, so let's have, see how we go. I shall need you up, I shall need someone to put me logic up. So I shall need the radiator, which is you, put you on the wall like that. I put you there like that. Uh, I should be able to put in a sensor. Put in you, daylight sensor goes there. I shall need some. Uh, uh, try logic. 
And so Logix will need a reader to read that uh, like that. I shall need a writer to write it out. Uh, I shall need uh, I shall need power. Uh, I shall cheat one of them with an uh, RTG. Uh, okay, so I should want uh, cables. Uh, I just want to hook you to there. Uh, you, you. Oop. Try again. Right, so that should give us that. So we will run to read the uh, satellite sensor. We shall read the uh, horizontal. There we go. We shall write out to the radiator horizontal. Right, you should be checking the tracking the sun now. So now I shall need some water, so some pipes. Uh, Give me the right thing. Can get that in there. Get in there. Oh, you dick. Fine. So if that can come down here, I'll need to seal it into a chamber and have some radiators on there. So, uh, You can put you back again, and I'll need to reconnect the logic. A horizontal. Try again. Uh, so if that's in a room, I shall need some uh, radiators, which will be the kit. Uh, Uh, do, 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 do. They should heat up the room it's in. So the sun should heat this, should heat the water. The water will heat the room that that's in, which will allow that to get hotter and hotter. At least that's the plan. Um, uh, no, it is a tank. Uh, Thank you. Right, we have water. Now the water will have to go to a heat exchanger. Um, so I could put the heat exchanger just over here where it's out of the way of the not blocking our furnace. Uh, uh, heater thingy. Uh, I shall need a furnace. Uh, advanced furnace, there it is. There we go. So I shall want some uh, shoots because I've got to um, seal that in. So that's our outlet. That'll be our inlet. Let's put a yeetable inlet on it. That one there. So that'll be you hooked up. Uh, so I shall need the gas for the pipes. So you. 
I put, so I put a tank on it. Um, I might do. Uh, tank. There we go. And a heat exchanger. There we go. For you and you. I shall need some. I shall need to get some gas in there to start it all, won't I? Um, just a little bit will be enough. Ah, there we go. It's enough. Um, I guess I'll probably want some sensors on there to read what's going on in there. So if I grab a liquid analyzer, well then I shall need the data from the tank. Gah. Um right. I can do that. Well planned. There we go. Excellent power. All right, let's put you on. Right, try again. Liquid pipe analyzer. Temperature. Liquid pipe analyzer. Pressure. Now it can be the advanced furnace. Advanced furnace, and you can also be the advanced furnace. If you the tank temperature, and you can be the tank pressure. Okay, not much in there at the moment. Um, probably got a lot of water. I want that much water. Uh, I might get rid of some of that. Uh, so I shall just uh, get rid of that in an easy way. Uh, if I just attach a tank to it and then delete the tank, the water should disappear. Uh, there we go, 300 kilopascals, that should be heaps. Right, so now I guess I just need to seal it all up. Uh, so you are going. Nice. Now, I shall seal it. Oh, come on. I want to stop it from overpressurizing there if it heats up. So, um... I should put a pressure regulator on there, so I should need a vent. There, there, a regulator. Put a back pressure regulator on it, and a pipe, and some cables. Uh, right, so if I put you back to, uh, say, 200 kilopascals, uh, it should drain anything beyond 200 kilopascals out of the room that we're going to build now. Uh, windows. So if we have, need to seal all of you up into that. Uh, the tank and the heat exchanger can stay outside, that's not an issue. Now, the theory being, 
as the sun shines on that it will heat up the water the water will heat up the room the room will heat up the radiator which allows the radiator to heat up even more and hopefully we might get more than our 300 degrees that it says it can do right um wait for morning i guess Wait a minute, I'm in creative, I don't need to do that. Uh, I can just... Uh... Oh look, daytime. Oh, that wasn't that handy. Right, so it's going to track... Uh... What happened to my temperature? Hmm, there we go. Okay, so temperature is going up as it should be. It should mean the temperature in the tank is uh, gone. I probably could have put a temperature sensor up in the room too, couldn't I? I might do that. Uh, so, okay, so that is over its pressure that it's meant to be. But uh, I think that thing's working on it. So, 128 degrees, rising rapidly. Well, <laughs> well until tomorrow anyway. 170 degrees in there, 180. I should almost be able to chuck some uh, stuff in there to create some gas. actually heating up now we're getting some gas I might make steel right so I'll need a thousand degrees no where's it Kelvin 900 Kelvin oh, I've got 400 close I'm uh, going to have to wait till tomorrow then, but looks of it, because the sun has gone down. Uh, so, day one, we're up to 180 degrees. Uh, shall I try again? Okay, we've just passed 300 degrees above the ambient temperature outside. Um, so the 300 degrees that it gets is not 300 degrees above the world temperature. Uh, it may be 300 degrees above whatever's in there. And as this keeps heating up the room, uh, it'll never get to 300 degrees above there. Until the whole thing catches on fire at least anyway. Uh, but yep, we're still going up. Right, if we're getting this with one of these panels, what happens if I put up a few of them? I put up three of them, expand the room, um, see how we go. Uh, so, oh, got it. Now what's it going to do? Now it should warm up in there pretty quickly. Uh, as the room warms up, oh, that's cooled down as well. There we go. Oh, let's hope I don't blow out the windows now. It's rising in temp pressure a bit too quick for the back pressure regulator to keep up with it. We're doing all right. Oh, okay, so we need 623, which will be our 900 Kelvin. 
and we're rapidly approaching that and just got to wait for the heat to get it work its way into the furnace and I should have my steel 650 Kelvin okay the water is up to almost up to 900 Kelvin uh, room is still lagging a fair bit behind what are we getting there 623, that's 900 Kelvin. 2, 3, 4, 5. So Megapascal, we're good. And a bing is our steel. Our steel from solar power. Nice. Uh, so I suppose it's a matter of um, how far can we take it? Uh, let's see my output. Can I make uh, stellite? I think the uh, the uh, high temperature one, isn't it? I need 10 megapascals. Silver, silicon, cobalt. Uh, 10 megapascals. I shall have. Silver, silicon. Now we'll get a bit of a. a re if I close it, I will get a bit of a reaction out of the uh, cobalt because the silver will uh, will make um, uh, nitrous and the cobalt will make hydrogen. So there'll be a bit of a bit of a burst yeah. cobalt uh, expect to see the temperature go for a bit of a rise there we go 2026 20, won't be enough to get it to the 1800 we need but it'll help us a little bit okay 820 <laughs> wow okay yeah, that's going to get there really quick. They were a thousand Kelvin in there, so yeah, the um, the 300 degrees is definitely not above the ambient temperature. It's above uh, whatever's in that room. Probably this may be a bit overpowered, just a wee bit. <laughs> that's the way it goes. Yeah, the air conditioner is too weak. What a load of rubbish! This thing's too powerful. Some people are never bloody happy, are they? Uh, but the air conditioner has also got a bit of a buff now, so it's uh, the pressure, the actual temperature drop off when it's op operating out of its optimal temperature range has been uh, boosted. So it drops down to 20% now instead of 5%. So you can actually cool down your Vulcan base now with the five of them strung together, uh, which is still a bit of a pain in the ass, but that's just long enough to get your winter spawn going and then you can retask all them to as part of your atmospherics uh, so we are looking for I think 1500 1500 degrees so that might take a little while uh, maybe another day um, oops <laughs> oh, jeez. If I can get close to the bloody thing. Right, yeah, we are approaching 1800 Kelvin. Uh, it seems with a bit of lower pressure in here, it seems to be uh, not exploding. So I've um, got a volume pump on running flat out and it is only just keeping the pressure down. 
Uh, there we go. We are just got to wait for the heat to pass into here. Okay, that is 1800 in there. Yeah, almost 1800 in there. Now if I turn down my output, I should be able to get my 10 megapascals. And bing, we have phthalite. That is the hottest alloy to make. Oh. <laughs> and there it is there. <laughs> Right, that is the hottest alloy you can make, and I can make it with a solar furnace with no gas, no electricity, it's just running off solar power. Yeah, I think they may be a little bit overpowered at the moment, so maybe they need to have a bit of a curve applied to the, uh, the amount of heat they generate, uh, depending on the solar availability, I guess. So they should work very well in Vulcan, and they should be pretty crap on and uh, Minmus, Min not Minmus, Mimus. Minmus is the wrong game. Uh, but anyway, that's uh, that's what this one here. So it's mostly about the radiators. There's a heap of other things there that have happened as well. Solar furnace, new radiators, a heap of fixes, um, and that's their new update. So. Um, probably missed a heap of things there but it is still pretty cool once again things cool down frames are no longer perfectly insulated vacuum rooms are no longer perfectly insulated so you're going to have to find other ways of doing things even if they are really ridiculous <laughs> anyway that's about it for today so until next time paint your radiators happy building see ya